Welcome to Electron Online, and here's another example of how we work with forces and magnetic fields. In this case, we have two parallel conductors, and we're trying to find the force between those two parallel conductors. So one has a current of 4 amps going upward, the other one has a current of 8 amps going downward, and they are 2 meters apart. So, why would there be any forces between them? Well, it turns out that each of these conductors will have a magnetic field around them, and that the conductor, let's say conductor number two, is in the presence of the magnetic field caused by conductor number one, so therefore it will feel a force, and conductor number one is in the presence of the field of conductor number two, so it will feel a force. So the strategy here is to find out first what the magnetic field strength is and direction over here caused by this conductor, and then we find out what the magnetic field strength is over here caused by that conductor. So let's do that. Well, first we're going to find the direction of the magnetic field, and using our right hand rule, we put our thumb in the direction of the current, our fingers curl in the direction of magnetic field, so the magnetic field is in a circular direction around this conductor right here, which means to the right it is into the board, and so I'm using blue to indicate that that belongs to this conductor, and of course on the left side of the conductor it is out of the board, so I'll represent that with dots. So there's the magnetic field, I'll call it B sub 1, caused by conductor 1. Which means that conductor 2 now is inside this field and it will feel a force based upon the direction and the magnitude of this B field and the current in, in uh, wire number 2. Now, conductor number 2 is going to have a magnetic field over here. Using a right hand rule, we direct our thumb in the direction of the current, our fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field, so we'll come out of the board here and into the board on that side. Let me use a red pen to indicate the B field caused by this conductor. So again, current going this way, B field into the board to the left, so here we'll have a B field into the board caused by conductor number two. And of course this B field is everywhere on this side, but on this side, it'll be coming out of the board, so I'll indicate that with dots. So, over here, where conductor number one is, we have B field caused by conductor number two, and I'll call that B sub two. Now we have to find out the magnitude of each of these magnetic fields. So, B number one, or B field number one, has a magnitude equal to, let me use the equation, mu sub naught divided by two pi times the current divided by the distance away from the conductor that causes the B field. All right, so uh, current here is I1, so we'll call it I1, and we'll call that R1, because R will be the same for both, and uh, plugging in the numbers, uh, this is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, that's Tesla's meters per amps. We multiply that times the current, and the current there will be 4 amps, and then we divide that by 2 pi, times the distance, and the distance will be 2 meters, so it'll be 2 meters like that, all right? Simplifying this a little bit before we grab our calculator, we see a 4 pi over there, we see a 2 pi times 2, which is also 4 pi, so that cancels out, so that means at the top we have uh, 4, of course meters cancel out meters, amp cancels out me uh, amps, so we have 4 times 10 to the minus 7 teslas, so that's the strength of the magnetic field over here where conductor 2 is, caused by conductor number 1. Now we find the magnetic field strength of B2, caused by conductor 2, so we have B2 is equal to mu sub naught divided by 2 pi times I2 over R2, of course R1 and R2 in this case are the same. Plugging in the numbers, we get 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 teslas meters per amps, we multiply that times 8 amps, now you say, well, shouldn't we have a negative and positive uh, current depending upon which direction it goes? Not really, we're simply finding the magnitude, and of course I should put magnitude signs on here, we're simply finding the magnitude, the direction is already decided by using our right hand rule. We divide that by 2 pi and the distance r, which is 2 meters. And again, these 4 pi cancels out those 4 pi, looks like I picked the right numbers in this case. Uh, the amps cancel out, the meters cancel out, and so we're left with 8 times 10 to the minus 7 teslas. Alright, so that means the strength 
of the B field over here where conductor 1 is, is 8 times 10 to the minus 7 teslas. And the B field over here, the strength of the B field over here is 4 times 10 to the minus 7 teslas. Now we need to find the force on each of these conductors. And not only the force, we also need to find the direction of the force. So let me find a different color here. And uh, let's see here. Conductor number 2 is inside the B field of conductor number 1. If I take my right hand rule and I point my fingers in the direction of the current, so I'll stand over here, so the current is coming down this way, and the B field number 1 uh, curls inward to the board, so it has a force outward like this. So the force on conductor number 2 is to the outside. So let's call that force number two. So that's the force on conductor two caused by the magnetic field of conductor one. Now, coming over here, using my right hand rule, I point my fingers in the direction of the current and it's under the influence of the B field from conductor two. Those are the red uh, crosses here. So I go up, point my fingers inward towards the B field. My thumb points out towards this way. So the force on conductor number one will be to the left. And so we'll call that force two um, oh, no, not force 2. We'll call that force 1, the force on conductor 1 caused by the magnetic field from conductor 2. All right, now we need to know what the force is, what the magnitude of the force are equal to. So let's start with force number 1. The magnitude is equal to, and if we remember the equation to find the force of a, on a conductor in a magnetic field is equal to, um, let's see here, it's equal to I and that would be the current in one times the B field caused by conductor number two, so we'll call it the B2, times the length of the wire that's uh, underneath the influence of that magnetic field. Now we haven't indicated yet how long a wire is under the influence, so let's say that the wires have a length equal to three meters. So we'll call that a three meter long wire. All right, plugging in the numbers. Uh, the current, well, before we actually do that, what is B2 equal to? Well, B2 is right here, comes from there, so we do have everything we need. So I1 is 4 amps. B2 is 8 times 10 to the minus 7 teslas. And then the length of the wire we said was 3 meters. And that will give us, let's see, 4 times 8 is 32, times 3 is 96. That would be 96 times 10 to the minus 7. Uh, the units are teslas, meters times amps, and that would then be 96 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. All right. Now, for the force on the other wire, force on the second conductor, that's equal to I in the second conductor, times the B field that it's being subjected to, which is the B field from conductor 1, times the length of the wire that's being subjected to the B field. And so that's going to be equal to I2 is 8 amps in this case. The magnetic field B1 is 4 times 10 to the minus 7 teslas. And then it's also a 3 meter long wire. And so that will be also 96 times 10 to the minus 7 teslas, meters times amps, which is 96 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. And so those are the forces on the two conductors due to the magnetic fields that are subjected to one another. All right, that's how you do a problem like that.